quick video on the weekend just uh, something I was working on on the MT1501 just wanted to show you guys something real fast so let's get into it embroidering on a dad hat I think once you can embroider on a dad hat a non-structured hat and perfect that method then you can pretty much control every other setting on your embroidery machine how I do my dad hats the first thing I do is straighten up my bill Dad hats come with a curved bill. I straighten it out as, pos as straight as possible. I bend it backwards and get the curve out to the point where it's straight as possible. Take the sweatband out. Then stabilize is really, really important. When you're doing dad hats, they're non-structured, so you want to use kind of like a thick stabilizer. And I have a long stabilizer because I'm going to embroider on the front of the hat and then the machine's gonna automatically turn to the side and embroider on the side of the hat in the same pass. If your machine can't do that, which most of them should be able to, then you need to reevaluate your whole situation. So um, yeah, there's several different reasons why I'm gonna tell you guys why I went with the MT-1501. And um, I'm very satisfied with my purchase and it's a bunch of stuff that I want to tell you guys in this video. But the main thing you want to remember when you're while you're looking at these videos, right? I'm just trying to show you guys that uh, whether or not the machine works should not even be a question because you guys are watching these videos and you guys are seeing all the things that I'm doing with it. And this is just the beginning. And most of my machine, most of my uh, videos, by the way, I do want are on hats all right not flats I'm gonna start doing flats now but most of them are on hats so right now you're watching me um, right now you're watching me hoop a hat right and this is very very important that you do this correctly because preparation is everything and when you get your embroidery machine it's not plug and play it's not gonna be easy this is the most important part preparation all right so what I'm doing is I'm straightening out the sweatband, I'm lining it up, um, I'm lining up the, 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 the split in the middle, I'm straightening out the, the, the left side and making sure that it's underneath um, the little metal flap there. See right there? I did that on the other side. And then the metal band at the top has to be, the little grooves in the metal band has to be against the brim. All right. Now I'm trying to straighten out the side so that so that um, it gives the, the embroidery machine a flat surface to embroider on. All right. Right now I'm lining it up, make sure it's close to the bill, and I'm making sure that flap is down right there, the metal flap. Keeping that underneath there, that part underneath there, loosely, just a little bit loose, so that um, I can manip manip manipulate it with the clips, guys. So um, there we go. I'm going to clamp this in. And now I'm going to make sure that, that surface is kind of uh, straight and flat. All right. I, I clipped this a certain way. Um, if you guys notice on the side of it, it's not all the way in like the top part. The, you'll, you'll understand what I mean when, um, when you start hooping hats. But it, it's take a while. You, it's going to take a while. You're going to waste some hats, guys. I'm going to be... You're going to waste some hats, all right, because this is a huge learning curve. See how I got this hooped up? See how everything is flat on the side? That's how it's supposed to be. Um, got a flat surface of the machine embroider on. And right, um, the top part is nice and close to the bill. And now you just take it off, and it's time to uh, put it on our embroidery machine, guys. It's that simple. It's not that simple, though. It's not really simple, but it's, it's, it's really that simple. So, um... One of the reasons why you uh, you want to one of the things you want to consider when buying an embroidery machine, a commercial embroidery machine, I should say. Um, first thing you want to consider: you're spending thousands of dollars. Your thousand dollars, thousands of dollar investment should not. I repeat. It should not be made out of plastic, in my opinion, because the MT-1501 is a solid machine. 
it's metal it's industrial grade it's heavy as all heck so that's one thing you want to consider when you buy a machine you want to consider how am I gonna move this thing cuz it's heavy I think if I'm spending thousands of dollars I want something sturdy and something tough something durable and that's the MT-1501 right now I'm tracing I put my I put my hat on the machine and I'm tracing uh, the design placing it right and making sure that that little uh, foot does not hit the metal part of the hoop when it um, when it embroiders out because so like I said this machine is is after you use it for a while, you get used to it, but you're going to have to be on it. But look how solid that is. I'm knocking on the side solid. of it right there. And it's just all solid metal, guys. Well, some machines are made solid out of plastic. If, that, if that's what you want, then there's nothing wrong solid with it. But metal. If your machine hey, is made you out of plastic, you want something sturdy, something that's that. going to last, something that can take a beating. That's this right here. MT-1501. Links down below. Thousands of dollars. I want something quality right um so what else uh, so the machine is tracing I got the laser device um, on the machine also to make sure it traces out so I can see things um, but yeah these machines have a big learning curve um, and it's not something that's gonna be plug and play it's not something that's gonna be easy and I, I watched a bunch of videos and I watched one video in particular. I can't remember the guy's name. Where's my phone at? Let me find the guy's name. I want to give him a shout out on a video. Um, where's his video at? Boom, 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 boom. Give me a second, guys. Let me find this video. Just watch what I'm doing. Mm -mm -mm. Where's that video I just watched? But anyway, I can't find it. But anyway, what I want to tell you guys is... I was told, oh, it's, it's Fine Prince, P-H-I-N-E-E -E Prince, and he has an MT-1501 also, and he said in his video that um, pretty much kind of like the same thing that I was saying in one of my rant videos, except he was giving his honest opinion about the MT-1501, which I agreed with everything he said, for the most part, but he also said he watched my video, and he said that I do... Um, I should do more hats because I do mostly flats. You guys know that that's not true. I do mostly hats, not flats. Um, so he suggested, why don't I just do it live and I show you guys live, even though in my videos, it's a straight run all the way through. He's suggesting that I should do lives. I don't have a problem with that. I'm comfortable with the machine. I wasn't comfortable with it few months ago when I first got it but I did know that it worked beyond what some people might believe um, beyond some of those other videos that were out there and those videos have mysteriously vanished um, and I have a, a theory because I've been watching videos about all types of stuff but you know I'm a youtuber so I'm, I'm checking other people's videos out right so um there was a video that a, a, a lady did, and she was a professional embroiderer. I think she was a professional embroiderer. Some of you might have saw the video. But to me, now that I've spent months with my machine, I 100% believe that that was uh, a malicious video, like a video that she did on purpose, saying that the machine didn't work on purpose. Don't ask me why. Stranger things have happened, but in my YouTube career now, I'm learning to um, not believe everything that I see or hear. The reason why I say it was done maliciously, and she knew exactly what she was doing, and, and because she's a professional embroiderer, and for her to be a professional embroiderer, and for her to deal with different types of machines, it didn't make any sense for her to say that this machine didn't work, because... It's um, official. It works fine, and I'm, I'm getting it to work. I, I can't. I can't. Uh, I can't believe. I can't wrap my bring myself to believe that me being a still a newbie to embroidery, 
can get this thing to work and she an experienced an embroider experienced embroiderer says that it's a piece of junk it doesn't work it, it just doesn't make any sense to me let me know what you guys think in the, in the comments down below but um another reason why you want might want to consider um this one right here the mt1501 if your machine can't um if your machine can't run by itself if your machine can't run by itself I'm like did you buy an embroidery machine or did you buy an accessory because the last time I checked if I'm buying an embroidery machine I want that embroidery machine to be able to embroider I want to be able to put my design in there and I want to be able to you know set stuff up and press start and go right so if I have to have a computer connected to my machine that's um a deterrent as far as I'm concerned and that's like a hindrance that's like a that's like a crutch right because because I'm spending thousands of dollars and I have to connect a computer to my machine in order for it to embroider what if my my computer gets a virus what if my computer just stops working everybody knows pcs are a piece of craps I, that's what i think macs are better i'm, I'm biased though because i have macs but i i have pcs also but it seems to me like you got to spend twice as much on a pc to get it to function as good as a as a base level mac and pcs have issues this whole conversation about PCs wouldn't even be a thing if, um, if put it like this, having to have your PC connected to your embroidery machine in order for it to work should not even be a question. It shouldn't even be an, a, 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 a thing. It shouldn't be a thing. All right. So that's just silly. The even the brother SE six hundred can run by itself. You just plug in your USB pick the design and run it. You don't have to have your computer connected to a SE600, couple hundred dollar machine, right? So why should you have to spend thousands, you know, it's upwards 12, 15, 13, 10, 9, whatever. Why should you have to pay thousands of dollars and have to have a computer connected to your machine? To me, that does not make any sense and that's one reason why that's another reason why I went with the MT-1501 all right so uh, I mean let, let me know if I'm making sense in the, in the comments down below so another reason why you might want to consider the uh, MT-1501 support customer support that's important and um, I listened, watched a lot of videos and they said everything about, you know, Rakoma having the marketing and their marketing might even hurt them sometimes. But at the end of the day, they have support, a lot of support. And support is important. Like when you're spending a bunch of money, it's really, really, really important to be able to reach out to the company or a representative to rectify some issues because you are going to have issues you are going to have issues because this is not plug and play unless you are an experienced professional embroiderer um you're going to have issues all right that's the reality because you don't know what you're doing right it's going to be a bunch of bunch of technicalities a bunch, bunch of things that you you know because you're watching my videos and i try my best to show problems so that you guys know what to do when you have these problems right but check out check out this part of the video right here this is another another re reason why um you might want to consider mt1501 this this right here all right so i said it was gonna embroider the front part and then after it's done the front part i'm also doing a, um some 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 Instagram stuff. If your embroidery machine can't do this, look, finish the front, go to the side, same pass. And that's a feature that I knew about. Most most commercial machines should be able to do that, I think. 
But all I'm saying is if your machine should be able to do that. For thousands of dollars, it should have a wide, be able to embroider on a wide radius. And I think that's a dope feature with the MT-1501 that I love. Um, that something, this is a whole nother can of worms, by the way. So um, you have to master the basic functions of your machines, of your digitizing software before you can even get into embroidering on the front and embroidering on the side. It's not a simple thing. I promise you, it's not a simple thing. So that right, this right here, this is a side. Uh, you thought that everything else was a huge learning curve. This is like a gigantic learning curve with this one because there's gonna be a lot of uh, um, adjustments you're gonna to have to make in the software. This this part right here is all done in the software. It's not even done on the machine. It's done, and so this is something that has nothing to do with the machine. It's something that's done pre-machine, pre right? So you're gonna play around with it and then you're gonna um, put it on there, see how it runs, see if something needs to be shifted. You're gonna go back in your computer, adjust it, right? Put that design back in, you know, uh, see if that one works. And all the while, you have to know how to work your machine because you gotta be deleting files on the machine, on the brain of the machine, deleting files and putting files back on. That all goes back down to, does your machine have a brain, right? <laughs> Do you have to have your computer connected to your machine? You know, the MT-1501 doesn't, it has a brain. You, you, if, you, if your computer has to be connected to your embroidery machine for it to run, your embroidery machine does not have a brain, right? Why would you buy an embroidery machine that can't function by itself, right? So, only thing I'm trying to get you guys to understand is that this stuff is not plug and play and it took me months to get comfortable with it um it's gonna take you months if not longer to get comfortable with yours i could have got comfortable with it faster but i wasn't on it every single day and even not even every i was on it maybe like once every two to three weeks to be honest with you guys so it did take me a while um but i get repeat orders um uh, another thing that I want to emphasize and tell you guys, a lot of the mistakes that you'll have, and I've been doing this for a while now, a lot of the mistakes that you'll have will be because your file is digitized wrong. Your file was not digitized right. All right. So that's something else you want to consider. But, um, guys, I was challenged and I think I'm going to do it more often than not with um, going live and doing these embroidery videos. And I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to go live because you guys want to see, um, you guys, you know, maybe I did this 10 times. You guys are thinking, maybe I did this 10 times and this is the best take, right? Because you, you you don't have any thread breaks or anything like that. But I'm going to tell you straight up, like, I did do, did do this a few times to get the placement right and to adjust how to do the embroider on the front and embroider on the side and and then I did the video right but it had nothing to do with the functionality of the machine so that's not a problem so um I just think this is dope uh, I feel like accomplished I feel like uh that um I'm finally like really really getting into some of the technicalities of the machine and um I'm, I'm confident enough to go live I'm confident enough to to to, to encourage you guys that if you're willing to learn that it's something that you should definitely look into so look at that we did the front we did the side taking the hat off and there you go you got the front and then you got embroidered on the side then you get something that looks like this All right still got to play with the placement a little bit I'm gonna lower this down Maybe about a half inch. I think it should be. I mean, the placement's not bad because, yeah, about a half inch right here. And then bring this down a little bit and over here a little bit. So, uh, yeah, um, looks good to me. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Um, front and on the side. Got that down. Thank you guys for watching. 
affiliate links in the description below if you want to inquire about this machine but uh just a few reasons uh what do we say uh if your machine can't embroider by itself if your machine um is not solid it's not made out of metal right industrial right durable um if your machine can't do this then you might have got the wrong machine um but stay tuned we'll be going live some more and we'll, we'll talk some more guys uh subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already and i'll talk to you guys on the next video peace turn up that crank it up why listen to the rest when you're rocking with the best baby